In the last video I promised that I'd show my new PCB CNC milling tool chain and that's what I'm going to do right now. now this is Eagle CAD and I've loaded my differential probe PCB design which has these large high voltage isolation cutouts. And this is the ULP called PCB G-Code. It's a CAM software. Everyone knows it, I guess. It's pretty popular. And it works really well, unless you try to get large high voltage isolation cutouts. I selected a 2 mm tool and set the maximum isolation to 6 mm, so it would do approximately 3 passes. And it does those three passes, as we saw in the animation. But in the last step it crashes. And the whole Eagle software crashes with it. But it's not a big deal, I guess. Just restart it and try again. It's probably just a small bug in the software, or even a fault on my side. Wouldn't be surprised about that at all. But I wanted to get started with Gerber files for a long time now because that just seems like the more professional approach. So this is an ideal opportunity to test some new software. First I'm going to create the Gerber files for the top layer, the bottom layer, drilling and milling. And that's not a very exciting process in the least. So I'm going to fast forward through that. Okay, now here comes the star of the show. It's a software called FlatCam. It's lightweight, minimalistic, free, open source and all the good stuff. So it's no surprise that I immediately fell in love with it. Okay, now watch this. No copper regions. Generate Geometry. Go to the Project tab and select the newly generated Geometry object. Enter your tool parameters. Generate. And click on the No Copper region. Isn't that beautiful? It takes a couple more clicks than PCB G-code, but in return you get so much more flexibility and control over each intermediate step. And that's all packed in a consistent and intuitive user interface, which is a huge achievement in its own. And on the other darker side, there's also a shell command line interface and the software runs on Linux as well, so you can have it completely automated. But enough of that promotion rambling, unless anyone is willing to pay me. Let's finish off this board. For that we can open up the top Gerber object again. And this time we are going to have a look at the isolation routing section. My tool parameters as usual. Uh, 0.2 mm tool diameter for my engraving bits and I want two passes with no overlap. Then you can generate the geometry just like before, they appear in red and from the geometry objects you can generate the G-code which appears in blue just like before. And to fully appreciate the next awesome feature we can hide everything again. PCB G-Code had a certain habit of creating terribly long tool tables for the drilling operations. Which is okay if you have a big machine with an automatic tool changer and a lot of tiny drill bits for all the different sizes. But for me that was rather unfortunate because I always had to manually edit the G-Code file to set my three basic drill bits everywhere, which are 0.8 millimeters for everything, one millimeter for everything that didn't fit, and quarter inch for fixed pins, 
because I can use broken tools for those. In FlatCam you can just select multiple hole diameters with a control click and then use the mill holes feature to mill all hole diameters you could ever wish for. Just gotta make sure that all holes are bigger than the milling bit you are planning to use, which is what I'm doing right now. I used that hole milling trick in PCB G-code times as well, because honestly I never even owned a quarter inch drill bit for my fixture pins. But for some reason PCB G-code was unable to mill circles. So I always had to construct circles out of two arcs. And that was very difficult before I learned to use the arc command. I had to google that stuff dozens of times at least. So what a relief this is, you wouldn't believe it. Okay, now all the drill diameters are above one millimeter and I can select every single one except for the quarter inch aka 3.175 millimeter fixed job pins and click on generate geometry under mill holes and then it generates the geometry object just like before. Opening that up you can set some additional parameters such as the drill depth which should be three millimeters or something like that to penetrate your PCB. And there we go. Simulated in blue. Now those quarter inch pins should go a little deeper into my fixture plate so they are as play free as possible. So I'm going to give them a cutting depth of minus five millimeters. By the way, in FlatCam there's also a tool that can generate those alignment holes for you, even with a preview of the alignment with the bottom side. But I didn't use that yet, because those holes were already in my ego design and it's easier this way, I think. There's only one thing left to do. I need some recess cuts on the corners since I want to mount these circuit boards inside a certain bobler enclosure. If it weren't for that I'd just use the board cutout feature on the top Gerber object and that would give me a square contour milling around the perimeter of the board. For this form however I just made a polygon on the milling layer in Eagle and exported that in a Gerber file and now I'm just using the standard isolation routing on this Gerber file to give me the board cutout. Now I have all the g-codes ready and I can export them as a file so that I can transfer them to my CNC controlling computer. And this is something that could really use some automation, I think, especially since I'm using the same one millimeter milling bit for three individual operations, hole milling, board cutout and high voltage isolation. I want to have all three in the same file, launch it at once and not have two change drives in between. But that's for another day. As of right now, I'm appending M2 to the end of each file. That is something like an end of file instruction for G code, and without those, Linux CNC would produce an error. All right, we are almost done here. This is the bottom layer, and I'm going to export everything again. And then I'd suggest we head on over to the milling machine and finally create the board. Well, I just did that and now in post-processing I realize that almost all the footage I made is way out of focus and absolutely unwatchable. Sorry for that, 
but the show must go on, so I'm going to use what I can. Gotta shorten it a bit. For guaranteed flatness, I'm gluing my raw PCB to this milled wooden plate. First step, board cut out. Second step, fixture hole milling. Then with inserted fixture pins I can mill all the other holes. Isolation routing. High voltage isolation area routing. And this is the finished product. I think it turned out beautifully. But there's one more thing I want to try. Haven't done this one before, so it might fail. Thank God this vessel is equipped with a chute. Otherwise I would spill water everywhere. Man, that would really suck, wouldn't it? Everything good comes from a bottle.